back in the woods Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School, back in another of our series on gear of the 20th century woodsman. And today we're going to talk about the Bridgeport hatchet. The majority of these Bridgeport hatchets that you find on the market have a Boy Scouts of America logo on the blade. And the reason for that is they were the official acts of the Boy Scouts of America for a long period of time. Now, the patent for this axe was approved in November of 1951 and it was under the Bridgeport Manufacturing Company name. And Bridgeport Manufacturing, if you're in manufacturing or around machining at all, you understand that Bridgeport makes large machines like mills and lathes. And those machines are still in use today in many factories. So that tells you how long that Bridgeport name has been around and how long those type machines have been around as well and speaks to the quality of that company. Now, what I found unique about this is not the fact that it has a metal handle. That really wasn't the invention of Bridgeport. Marbles had a metal handled ax long before this Bridgeport was patented. What I thought was cool about this ax, not only the fact that it was a Boy Scouts of America type hatchet for a long period of time and was licensed to be stamped Boy Scouts of America, but also that it had I-beam construction. So if you look at this, it's thinner here in the center and it has like an I-beam on both sides of it. And that continues all the way down the handle. If you take these wooden handle scales off, it actually has a skeletonized I-beam inside to lighten the weight of the handle and make it more heavy with weight forward toward the head. And I think that's a very unique part of the engineering of this ax, as well as that I-beam style construction. Obviously, you're not gonna hurt this ax if you over-swing it. You don't have to worry about breaking a wooden handle or anything like that. I think that if this were a full-size ax, it may be a little cumbersome, but for a hatchet, to have that metal constructed handle on it is not necessarily a bad thing. And these hatchets are still available. You can find them on eBay and other sites like that, although they're fairly expensive. To find one in this condition with good solid wood handles on it, you're talking upwards of close to $100. In 1951, this Bridgeport hatchet sold for $4.25. In today's money, using an inflation calculator, that is a little over $75. So you can pick this ax up for close to that money today in good condition. So it shows that the ax has, number one, held its value over time, but it's also comparable in quality to many hatchets on the market today and falls in that same price range. Okay, guys, well, I appreciate you joining me today for this short video on the Bridgeport hatchet. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot more to talk about with this hatchet. This hatchet was kind of Bridgeport's claim to fame when it comes to the outdoor world. This was the only tool that they really made. They made lots and lots of other hand tools and larger machines like Bridgeport lays and mills, but this was their contribution to the outdoors. It's kind of an obscure ax. You do see them every once in a while, and you can find them if you're looking for them, but some people have probably never seen them. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit your notification bell. And don't forget to check out my other instructors that have YouTube channels as well. I have uh, Corporal's Corner, which is Sean Kelly, Black Hat Bushcraft, Matt Mercer, also Josh Enyart, the gray-bearded Green Beret. All of those gentlemen work for me here at the Pathfinder School teaching classes, and they all have great YouTube channels as well.